Kodak Retina 2A. Stiff focusing ring, can't reach infinity mark, range finder off, Zeiss bumps, and a broken paper washer jumped, dropped out from the lower door hinge. It doesn't have one at the top either, so it's got no paper washers. That's not at all unusual, of course. Let's have a look at this thing. Well, the leather around the door here is very fragmented. It's been glued back in places. It's got splits. I don't know whether I can improve that. I'd have to get that off. And I don't know what's been used as adhesive. And uh, get it back on the door. This split here with the wide gap in it suggests that the leather has been pushed too far back on that conical section. And which of course stretches it. It would need to be brought forward so that the edges meet up again. However, Zeiss bumps. This one has got a bump there, and it's very slight. There's certainly bumps here around the strap lug on that side. This side you'd hardly notice, and on the hinge line here, yes, it's got bumps there, but whether I'd chase those, I'm not sure that I'd really do anything about those bumps on the normal course of events. So, what about this focus business? The focus is very, very stiff. Feels dry, like the gear grease has dried out. Now, the, there's a problem here with the front standard. This strut is not dropping into place, which probably has a bearing on the stiff focus. So the struts are damaged here. You can see that the door Look at that door, the angle of that door. It's pushed in far too much. It should be sitting somewhere up like that. That strut does not pop into place. That would have a bearing on the rangefinder too, of course, because it would be shifting the uh, rangefinder arm in and out. Looking at the damage on that, the angle of the door there, I would say that most likely it's been squashed and this is buckled up as a result which would also account for the damage to the struts I suppose however does it wind? it winds and not only does it wind but the frame counter works the shutter fires what's the rangefinder look like? Well, it hardly moves at all. It's very stiff. It's obviously not returning correctly. So I'm going to strip this camera down and deal with what ails it. I'll start with the top. Something through the fork of the rewind. Spin the rewind off. Now this rewind here is not firmly fixed to the... Uh, Rewind knob, unlike more commonly seen. The advanced lever, I'll just stand that off 90 degrees, engage a tool at the top, and unscrew that. Now that screw was quite loose, not loose enough to cause a problem, but certainly looser than I would normally expect it to be. It's our frame counter spring or pull intact. They're very delicate. Be careful about those. The top cover, one screw at each end of the top cover. This one looks a bit mutilated, like it's been um, screwdrivered a wee bit too much. The top cover lifts off. lift off the film release button and its return spring. The shutter release 
I'm just checking, sometimes there's a washer, a spacer down on the shaft that this sets into and I was just checking to see if there was one present because it's very easily lost there didn't, there wasn't one present so that's good the range finder two screws hold that in place that's quite tight And I'll have a look at this range finder, see if the arm is stiff, that returns OK. That's not too bad, let's see what it looks like. Well it returns back past the infinity position, which means that its little stop here is incorrectly adjusted. Otherwise it's quite good, it's even fairly clean which I have to say is quite unusual take the rewind off while we're here this one has a screw that stops the inner and outer sections coming apart it's quite sticky I'll just cock this shutter which I did by forcing the cocking rack across take the gear off the top there and I've just done allowed the film advance to unspool and I can get access to the screw in here there's one here and one here that hold the bracket in position one of those screws, the one at the front here of course has a spring on it that's all very sticky, there's a bit of corrosion on this Nothing too uh, awful, but there's certainly some to be seen. Take those components off. This little piece here is the ratchet action that uh, limits the movement of the film advance lever. It tracks the cam and allows you to move the film advance lever in the forward position the forward direction for advancing the film and as you get to the end of the stroke the cam then move, it moves up to the other position on the cam and tracks the other cam surface so that you can the film advance lever can only be returned to the rest position it cannot be inched backwards and forwards now this is sandy up here I can feel sand and see a bit of sand so we'll lift that off yeah, it feels a little bit gritty that's our return spring for that small plunger cam that we had out earlier let's get the clutch off there split the clutch That's the top of the camera. Oh, at the bottom of the camera now we do have Zeiss bumps. Okay. See if I can get under this leather. I'll peel this back gently. Now the leather on these cameras is trapped by this aluminium boss there that was put on after the leather why they chose to do it that way I'm blowed if I know it's a crazy practice right so here's our Zeiss bumps 
nasty green scunge. In one case it's on a brass rivet and here it's on two brass screws. We'll remove those screws. The tripod socket is typically loose, it's not loose. Three screws hold the collar for the film advance shaft. I we'll hold back the lock lever for the uh, rewind button. That allows me to push that shaft out. And you can take out the take up spool. There's nothing particularly unusual about that. There's not even lots and lots of film chips in there. Right, so I've got to get my rewind knob off, rewind button off there. And I can't find my favourite tool for doing that job, but these pliers will do the job. I must do a proper search and find out what I've done with that. Here's the lock lever for the rewind button that pops up to hold the rewind button in position once you set it until you move the film advance lever again which frees that up single screw runs through the sprocket to the sprocket shaft here's their sprocket shaft here's their sprocket I'll take the hinge pin screws from the door at the bottom and at the top. In the door I will encourage off the front standard. The arms here are slightly bent um, indicates to me that the camera was probably crushed in or the camera was dropped when it was in the open position. Nothing much to see here. I want to get the shutter off next so I need the tool for that. Here I've got a tool for engaging the retaining ring. This tool was made by Belgian in the USA, but unfortunately Mr. Belgian doesn't make them anymore. Occasionally you might see one come up second hand on eBay. I think the last one went for about $70 or something. Which would probably be twice what they fetched when they were new and available. Well there's my shutter off. looking at the state of this there's a some haze there's a layer of some haze or something on the inside of that lens likewise the rear component start on this focus mechanism so first I'll remove the screw from the arm the coupling arm for the rangefinder Two screws here hold that coupling arm to the front of the inner helical. You can see that arrangement there. Now the sand's falling out of this so I can feel the grit on my work mat. Two screws hold this piece in place. 
that's a gear on the front that gear couples from the rear of the camera and it drives this rack here on the, the shutter to cock the shutter. Now here I'm looking to see if there's any sign that the focus scale ring has shifted on the outer helical and to be honest I don't see one so I'm going to mark that assuming that that is correct. So typically I run two lines from the focus scale ring to the outer helical at the top, at the bottom rather, one at the top. That's my alignment marks. Now I know how the focus scale ring was aligned with the outer helical. Even if it has turned, turns out that it has shifted, um, it'll give me a start point, somewhere to start from a reference place to start from and from there I can make any adjustments that I need to. If it hasn't shifted it'll all be good. So there's my focus scale ring. Now looking at the inner and outer helical at that setting and here we are the inner and he outer helical are pretty much dead level with each other I can see a series of three scribe lines across there which tells me that a previous repairer has put those scribe lines there to tell him where the inner and outer helical should be aligned. So I know that from observation that when the inner and outer helical are sitting dead flat with each other, flush on the front face, those three scribe lines are lined up, which is the sort of thing I would do too. I would uh, mark it in a similar fashion. So typically what I do is I extend the scribe lines I'd already put top and bottom. So this is quite stiff with dried out grease. Not as bad as I would expect, that tells me that a lot of my stiffness was here. It was the stiffness of the outer helical moving in this mount, and that does feel very stiff. Four screws here hold the bellows to the back of the front standard. With them, the bellows should fall back into the body, and they do. Four screws here hold the shutter to the front, the lens mount to the front standard, or shutter mount to the front standard, and they're loose. All right, so I'll recover those screws. Here's our focus mount. I'll just knock those screws out. These screws held the bellows to the back of the front standard. And the camera's getting well stripped down now. Right, I want to remove the struts. There's a single screw at the top of the body in this position. There'll be a screw in the bottom of the body in the same location. It's loose. There are two screws in the film cassette chamber. Typically I have to 
can loosen these by thumping things with hammers and one of them is in fact tight and I'll need to do exactly that. So I'll use a screwdriver, an old screwdriver that's lost its top as an impact driver to shift that. I can do that off camera because you can't see me doing it. That loosened up straight away so I can remove that screw. and the struts will come out of the body. There is the transfer shaft that transfers the action from the cocking rack to the front of the camera and it's very dirty and gritty. Let's take that spring off. There's the body of the camera ready to be cleaned. A lot of dust and grit in there. A bit of dried grease. Nothing particularly unusual. And here are our struts. So I'm looking at the state of these to see where things are bent where they should be straight or straight where they should be bent. And I can see that this arm is bent. That should be quite straight. That's got quite a pronounced bend on it. The one on the other side is fairly good by comparison. That suggests that it took a very uneven hit when the camera was dropped. And that looks like damage to the top strut. So I would expect that the door took a blow at the top here somewhere. I'm not seeing anything. Oh, there's a touch of glue there. Oh, it scrapes off with my fingernail, that's good. It looked for a second like that might have been araldite or something, which of course would mean I was never going to get that leather off. Major damage here is at the top too, so that suggests this door was certainly thumped in at the top. Okay. Well, cleaning. Well, while I'm here, I'll get rid of those that corrosion patches that cause my zeiss bumps. And here, of course, it has stretched the leather up. Those corrosion spots have pushed the leather up, and that's what creates the bumps that you see on the outside. Here. This is where the leather sits over the top of those two brass screws. And again, that's where the Zeiss bumps form. And stretch the leather out so that you have two high spots. They may or may not flatten out quite nicely. You can never tell with leather. Sometimes it is exceptionally resistant to flattening out. Now the Zeiss bump on the back there, I may or may, may not chase that. I'm just looking to see if the leather is loose. If it's loose, I'll do it. It's always possible to tear the leather because it's quite thin. So I've got to, if I've got to fight to get it off the camera, it's not worth the fight. It's not worth chasing a bump as small as that at the risk of ruining the leather completely. That's good, that just needs to be cleaned. 